Hello everyone, welcome to another ODNT Spotlight. I am your host, Steve DeWinter, and I have with us a very amazing thriller author, and thrillers are very close to my heart. I started out reading Robert Ludlum, and I love the whole Jason Bourne concept in the series, which uh, Eric Lusbader's taken over that series and continued on, and I enjoy reading those, and so I love, love, love thrillers. And I went and I took a peek at uh, John W. Howell, who's with us here today. I took a peek at a couple of his novels, and boy, he just gets going right away with a rip roaring adventure. And so his first book that he came out with in the John Cannon series, where his main character's name is John Cannon, is My Girl. And he just came out this past October with the sequel to this one, the next one in the John Cannon series, His Revenge. So let's go ahead and let's switch on over to John. And let's meet him. Hello, John. Welcome to ODNT Spotlight. Hi, Steve. It's so good to be here. I'm, I'm really happy about that. And I'm so glad to have you here. So tell us about His Revenge. What is that about? Well, His Revenge is a, a continuation of My Girl. In fact, uh, the, the John Cannon series is a trilogy. Uh, the final book, which is finished but in editing, is called... Uh, uh, our justice. So Ooh. you have my yeah. girl, his revenge, and then our justice. So his his revenge is takes a look at uh, a deep look at the motivation of both uh, the protagonist and the antagonist. Both think they're right. Both are out for revenge. So the big question in the book, which I hope to answer by the end, is who actually gets revenge? You know, John Cannon wants revenge because. This Matt Jacobs character sunk his boat, shot one of his best friends, left him lying there uh, unconscious next to her dead body. So he's, he got kind of ticked off about that. Uh, <laughs> and that was page one of the first book. That was one, yeah. Boom! <laughs> so, so he's back, a uh, little injured but recovering. Um, and he just wants to bring uh, this guy to justice. So that's what the book's all about. John Cannon trying to to get what, what he feels is his brand of justice uh, against this Matt Jacobs character. Excellent, excellent. So what what inspired you to write a thriller mystery series like this? Well, it's interesting. Uh, I was uh, a member of business uh, for over 40 years, and I always call it a you know prisoner of organized commerce. <laughs> uh, and I finally broke free. Um, I actually got a my last child out of college, so I said, okay, time to retire. Done. Uh, done. Uh, so that was three years ago, and, and I always loved, like you, loved, uh, you know, the, the various authors who, who wrote thrillers, and I thought, well, I'm not too much of a comedian, you know, so I'm not going to write something that's ha-ha funny. <laughs> uh, I'm not too much of a romantic. I mean, you can look at me. I'm like 110 years old, <laughs> so there's no romance here. So I thought, well, what can I do? Let me try uh, writing what I would consider a thriller. And to, to be honest with you, Steve, when I started writing, I kept passing it around things to people and saying, is this a thriller? <laughs> you know, I didn't even know. You know I, well, it, it seems thrilling to me, but I'm the stoop putting the, putting the words on paper. Right. Uh, but uh, finally, a, a bunch of alpha readers said, yeah, it's a thriller. Don't worry, John. You can call that a throw. You nailed it. So, so uh, and I enjoyed it so much. Um, the thing I like about a thriller is uh, you can bring to the reader the the actual problem. In other words, I write in the first person present tense. So the reader is, is following along with me as things are developing. So John Cannon, by the way, not much can happen when he's not on stage, so to speak. Right, it's because a first person, first person, so it's it's him, and you're right there with present tense. You're right there with it. This isn't something that happened. This right. is happening right now. Right, and I'm often asked, what's the difference between a thriller and a mystery? Well, a thriller actually lays everything out for you. I mean, there's no guesswork who done it. Right, we see the bad guy. We see him yeah, doing it. You probably saw the blood and the gore in the first chapter. You know, you saw this whole thing. <laughs> uh, in a mystery, of course, there's an unfolding of the process and. Finally, at the end, somebody jumps up in the in the uh, library and says, "Okay, gotcha." You know, one of those. Um, in a thriller, the idea is to follow along, to see what happens, and hopefully there are twists and turns, so that the reader 
is left guessing most of the time. In other words, they're not in the dark. They're just wondering, you know, what's coming next. So the, the, the thriller writer, the, the, the good ones, and I, I'm just saying, I, I don't count myself in that category, but, <laughs> but the really good ones, and you mentioned Loveland and those guys, they throw twists in that the reader says, yeah, that was logical, but I really didn't expect it. Right. So there was no major surprise. It wasn't out of context, but it was unexpected. Always good. So you mentioned that you've been uh, writing now for three years. Right. And so you just finished, uh, now in edits, the third book in your uh, John Cannon series. Right. But I also noticed when I was uh, checking you out on the website that you have a uh, novel that currently using as a doorstop in the laundry room. <laughs> yes. Uh, that was my very first novel. And I, I, what I tried to do, Steve, was I tried to work. Remember, organized commerce. Tried <laughs> to work uh, and then tried to write. And, and what I did was, you know, I'd work all day and I'd come home and I'd do all the emails and all the stuff because you continue to work in organized commerce. And then maybe at 9.30 at night, I'd start writing. Well, I, you know, my head had hit the, you know, the keyboard. And I'd be, <laughs> so, so maybe I'd get a few words out. Ten pages of the letter Z. Yeah, really. <laughs> so uh, it took about ten years to get the first novel. And it was 120,000 words. For, for your listeners, that's maybe mm, almost 500 pages. Yes. Okay. Um, so this is a big thing. So I, I printed it out. Big Big oh, stack. Used a you whole know. ream of paper. Yeah, big old thing. And I had it, I bound it. And uh, I took it on an airplane with me and I decided to edit it. And I was traveling, of course. And I'm editing and editing and editing. I, I looked around and I said, you know what? This is a piece of crap. <laughs> it really is a piece of crap. And it was. There was no doubt about it. And I hadn't shown it to anybody. Knock wood, thank God, and all that. <laughs> So I took that, and it's still in my laundry room, still serviceable. So my first novel is actually a very productive piece. It has <laughs> it's a productive a member of society. Yeah, so uh, then I moved to my next, next piece, which is My Girl, uh, and finished uh, My Girl, then His Revenge. And as I said, I did finish uh, Our Justice, but I also went on and finished a fourth book, which is totally unrelated. Ah, so, yeah, because that was, that was another question I'd ask you later, is what's next from the great John W. Howell? Yes. Just... Well, next is a, is a kind of a, a strange book. And we'll get into my method, I'm sure, in a minute. But um, I'm not a planner. I'm not a plotter. Um, I, I sit at a blank screen for the first page, and, and I start. I have in my head an idea. Uh, and what I do to prompt myself a little bit is I write the last three lines of the book. So you have your end line. The last three. Literally, you have your finish line. Exactly. You wrote it. I wrote it. Uh, I also ride a bike uh, eight miles on the beach. And a lot of time riding the bike, I'm also planning. Okay. But I don't plan from a classic sense of, of sketching each chapter and all of that. You're just but thinking amorphally it. about your story. Yeah, it, it's almost uh, organic. You know, I... I suck in the seagulls and the, the <laughs> fish and all this stuff as I'm riding along. Um, and, and the end result is you know, I come back and I say, you know, that was a great idea. I think I'll put that down. And, and that's how the book unfolds. And then as most authors will tell you, the characters, if they're developed in, in a proper way, take over. They just, you know, they grab you by the throat and say, look, I'm going to shoot this guy. And you go, no, 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 don't, 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 oh. Shot, yeah, right? if you make them yes. a real enough motivated character, then they're going to do what they want. Exactly, Steve. So uh, uh, the fourth book is, is uh, uh, Circumstance of Childhood, it's called. And it really has, it, it's kind of a weird book. I mean, I just started, I said, I'm going to write this one for fun. Because I already committed myself and my girl to the so-called plot line. Right. So right. Circumstance of Childhood is about a guy. Who, who basically didn't have much of a childhood. You know, he had a lot of trauma. And then he grew up to be a big executive with a big old... Uh, first of all, he was a jock, and then he, he became a, a Wall Street child. So life's star. been good to him. Life was good. And life had to end, as we know. So uh, that's the story, basically. What, what goes on 
after he, he takes a, a huge fall. Um, uh, and it is a thriller, uh, still. I tried to, I, I wanted to get into general fiction, but I'm sorry, I'm a thriller. You're a thriller, thriller writer author. through and through. Yeah, I can't stand it. Those you know, elements I, will I still it. intrude. So you've written four and starting on book five in the last three years. What is your process that enables you to get through completing stories so well and so quickly? Yeah, great question, Steve. Uh, when I first started, um, you know, I have a family, a lovely wife who's an inspiration. Um, and she has things she's, she likes done around the house. So I first started with, well, let me get my honeydews out of the way and then I'll start writing. So I, I actually wouldn't sit down until like one o'clock after lunch, one o'clock. Um, and I found that, you know, basically some of the energy was gone by then. And so I decided to kind of flip this around. I, I published, I mean, my girl was published. And, and so then the family said, oh, uh, I guess you are a writer, you know, instead of <laughs> proof. <laughs> instead, yeah, instead of this retired guy who's here's four. Christmas presents for everyone. Proof. <laughs> um, I, I'm I'm still looked at uh, like this retired guy underfoot, but now I'm this retired guy underfoot who has a purpose. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, my wife finally said, "Well, you know, how can I help you?" And I said, "You know what you can do." I said, I, "I'm committed to writing a thousand words a day." A thousand words a day. Impressive. Impressive. Which I do. Um, I said, if, if I could do my thousand words before anything else, in other words, yes, we'll walk the dogs, you know, at, in the morning, but then let me come back, do the thousand words, and when I'm done, I'm yours the rest of the day, if that's, if that's the case. And she said, great, let's try it. So, uh, second book has revenge. I started a thousand words a day, never... Never missed a beat, and that's seven days a week. Uh, and moved right on into the third, thousand words a day. Moved right on into the fourth, thousand words a day. Um, now, this is on top of a daily blog and a top of, of, I don't count emails or any of that, you know, into the, in your work or the blog. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't count it in there. And I get a report. I've got an, an editor service that sends me a report on my blog. And they say, oh, this week you did 85,000 words. <laughs> okay, somebody's making a mistake. <laughs> so anyway, that's that is, and and the discipline with that is, I don't get lunch if I haven't done a thousand words. I don't get to enjoy you know the afternoon if I if I don't have a thousand words. And once I have the thousand words, though, I'm free. I get this kind of a free feeling that I can go on to do two thousand if I wanted to. Or I could just stop there and, you know, uh, hoe the, the flower beds or mow the lawn or whatever whatever needs to be done. So you got my, you know, that's my process, right? And that's a that's an excellent process. How do you you know it, it's the old uh, adage? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Exactly. And so you you know sit there and you go, I'm going to write a hundred and twenty thousand word novel. Well, guess what? It's only going to take me a hundred and twenty days. With your goal yeah. of a thousand words a day. And then the day is on hold until you achieve that. So sometimes you'll get that done in an hour and a half. Sometimes it's going to take you four hours. Well, if you start getting hungry, that's incentive to get those words done. Absolutely. Well, you know there have been cold, clammy days where I've sat there and sort of like uh, Snoopy, you know, it, it's a dark and stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that is, um, okay. So um, going back to uh, you don't bother outlining your no. novels. You just blank page, doesn't affect you. There's no such thing as a – have you ever bumped into the infamous thing that people always talk about, writer's block? No, I really I, – here's what I do. Uh, and I, I used to think I had writer's block, but I really didn't. I had, I'd had writer's laziness. Aha. Yeah. I like that. And, and writer's block I found is, is – is you know can can be a hundred and one excuses for everything that that you don't want to do, and writing is a painful thing. I mean, sometimes it's so glorious, and other times it's just like it's just like pulling something out of your throat, you know. <laughs> um, so uh, 
what I do is, is the last line I write for the day, I'm thinking of the first line of tomorrow. Ah, so, so I write that. the last line, and then I probably write the first line for tomorrow. And so when I come back, I don't have this huge review problem, you know, where I spend a lot of time, you know, hey, where was I? Oh, yeah, let me read. You've already you know, given back. yourself your push. Right. So I kind of, uh, it's like on a hill, you know, I give myself a little advantage. Uh, because face it, you know, I, I'm uh, getting up there. And, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, memory comes kind of screeching to a halt. So you have to kind of <laughs> What was I doing? <laughs> yeah. What was this? What was this story? But that, that's part of the process as well. Wow. And that, that is very impressive. So you sit down and you just right away. And um, uh, Dean Wesley Smith is a good indie author that I like to follow. And he talks, he calls it writing into the dark. Yes. Where you just go, I, I have my end goal because you don't want to meander. So right. I, I, and I like the fact that you literally write your finish line. I love that. Yeah. And so you write to that and you as a writer, get to discover the story like a reader because oh, of how you do it, absolutely. which of course makes it awesome. You're now writing the, your most best favorite book ever because you're reading it while you're writing it. Absolutely. And, and you know what? When you rush, rush out of the room, cackling and, and feeling so great, and your family <laughs> looks at you, you know they won't understand. <laughs> so, so you just go, oh, yeah, well, I, you know, I, I wrote something that I really like. He just wrote a villain twist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So um, it sounds like you've really got a good handle on maintaining a, a consistent system that you have. So do you have any other advice for new writers? I love the advice of, you know, have your goal in mind. Be consistent. Give yourself a micro goal that is achievable. And right. do you have any other advice for new writers? Yeah, the one, the one item that I found, uh, the thing that stops a new writer from finishing what they start is influence. And the influence usually is outside influence. In other words, a writer, will, new writer will sit down and write, a, say, a, a chapter. And then they'll show it to somebody. And, and, and when they show it to somebody, somebody has a problem with it. They have to. <laughs> You know, they, they, they don't know what the story's about or, you know. So they go, well, I'm not sure I would, you know. So all of a sudden, then there's a, there's a, 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 a confidence issue. And, and because all writers are, are just, they, they have confidence issues every day because they're, they're facing, you know, their, their own demons every single day. So this confidence issue comes up and, and writers then start to wonder if they should take a class or they should, you know, do this, do that, do the other thing. And pretty soon it's another stalling technique. So instead of getting into that painful thing of putting your words down on paper the way you want them, you, you sort of you know acquiesce to others' opinions. And any writer that does that will never finish a book. So my advice, real simple, don't show your stuff to anybody till it's done. Nobody. If you need a critique group, give them short stories or paragraphs out of you know, some novel that somebody else wrote or whatever. But don't show them your current work in process. Because the only thing you'll get out of that, if anyone has a problem with it, is discouragement. And no one writes the first draft that is published immediately. Oh, here's my first draft. Please publish it. It's so great. No. You have edit after edit after edit. Rewrite. Edit. Rewrite. So why start off with the first draft and having people pick at it? It's stupid. It's only going to cause you grief. Grief. And believe me, I, I, I got this from experience. Experience. I wrote a poem one time and handed it to somebody, and they said, it doesn't rhyme. <laughs> and guess, guess what? It wasn't supposed to. <laughs> but, but it stopped me from writing poetry for a while. Oh, no. Yeah, because I, I really respected the person. And it doesn't rhyme. It was like, like uh, Amadeus, too many notes, you know, and you go. Right, right. The ear can only hear so many notes in an evening. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's my advice. Just write your stuff to the end. It may be crap. Don't go back and edit. I, I know a number of, of authors, and there's some really good people who do it. They'll write a paragraph, then they'll go back the next day and edit it. 
then they'll write another one, edit that, or they'll write a chapter and edit that, or they'll go back to see if things fit. I say, just keep going. It's crap probably, but just keep going. And and so that's so that's going along with your earlier goal. It's a thousand words. It's a thousand new words a day. Exactly. Exactly. Not Good rehashing point, the old thousand words from last, yesterday. Perfect. Great ad there, Steve. Great ad. Excellent. So you've got Our Justice will be coming out. So uh, so you just had His Revenge came out in October. Right. And uh, Our Justice is right now being worked on uh, with the edits. You've actually yes. finished writing it. And then you started on your next novel. So this is good. So you're, you're keeping up. So when you finish a novel, do you take any break, uh, celebration, like I did it, I finished that one, or you just go, well, next day, thousand words, that novel's done, let's start a new one. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you ever read the book uh, Misery by Stephen King. I have not read the book, but I did read his on writing book. Oh, yeah, no, terrific. I saw the movie. <laughs> well, Misery, the movie. Okay, let's talk about Misery, the movie. You know, where the guy had the cigarette and the champagne at the end of writing. Right. Uh, you know, I, th I always envisioned that I would sit there and have a cigarette. I don't smoke. But have a cigarette and a glass of champagne as, as being a, a writer, you know. And then I'd sit and talk about this. Now, you know what you finished. You feel good that you got to the end. I always do. But they're, they're, the real work is about ready to, to, to come at you. Because really what you've done so far is you've, you've taken your hobby, writing, You've put it onto paper, and you had a lot of fun doing it. Now comes the point of taking this hobby, this fun, and turning it into something that other people would enjoy as well. And that's where the real, real work is. Because I don't, I don't actually, when I write for myself, I'm a complete idiot. I really am. <laughs> and in my blog, I, I, I tend to, to, to be an idiot. But when I write a novel, I tend to try to keep the reader in mind. You know, what would the reader think about this? What, what, does this make any sense? You know, am I going to leave them in the, in the dust here somewhere? Is this, is this me being self-absorbed? You know, I love, I love authors that say, well, I write for myself. Oh, good. You know, wow. and they probably are million, million sellers. Great. Yeah. But uh, I, I tend to keep an eye and an ear to the reader. Exactly. What what are they going to enjoy? You know, if it's it's if it's too internal and personal, you you limit how many people are going to get enjoyment out of it. Right. Well, that's the whole point of reading. You should enjoy it. Yes. You know, you shouldn't be tortured by it. If the if the author is tortured putting it together, that's his problem. You should not be tortured reading it. <laughs> right. Re writing should be just as much fun as reading. Right. Well, for me it is, but reading should be just as much fun for the reader. And so as you continue on and you get your, you know, as a book comes out, you, you just had uh, His Revenge come out. You've already finished the next one. Right. Because you're just, you're, you're going around, you've got your process, you've got your system. It works and it enables you to keep moving forward. Right. But don't forget, I have to loop back. Now that His Revenge is out, it's out there. Hey, everybody, <laughs> just go buy it. Yeah, I've got the uh, links. Uh, I'll take a break here. So if you're watching this on uh, embedded in another website, click the button down there that says watch on YouTube. And in the description, I have the links. I've got the link for the book, His Revenge, down below, as well as uh, John's Amazon page. And then also to connect with John so you can find out when Our Justice comes out or Circumstances of Childhood comes out. Uh, you can connect with his, I have his website, I have his Facebook, his Twitter, his Google+, his LinkedIn, his Goodreads, his Safari, his Publishers Author DB page, the Authors DB page, and also um, Martin Sisters Publishing, his author page there. So we've got all sorts of places where you can find John W. Howell. Boy, thank you, Steve. And we would definitely love to have you back on the show to promote Our Justice when that comes out. Oh, and I'd be happy to come back, too. Exactly. Really so I've got the link to the book, uh, His Revenge. I caution you against taking a look at the uh, preview of that one because it will spoil everything from the first book. So get My Girl first. And because it, it takes, you know, I went and I read the little bit of My Girl. I read the beginning of His Revenge and I'm like, oh, you told me everything that's happening in My Girl. No. <laughs> spoil, uh. spoil. So because he just, 
He John wastes no time in starting his stories. He just boom, here we go. The ball is already running. They always say start the scene in the middle of the action. And you you take that to its extreme and it's awesome. Good, good. I have to say though, if people can't buy my girl, maybe they're having to sacrifice food versus the book. I would buy his revenge because yes, there is a little intro, but the story is totally different. Totally different. Excellent. So and the intro gets you caught up so that you can read his revenge as a standalone almost. Yes. Excellent. That was my goal. That was my goal. Well good. I stand corrected. Thank good thing know. I had the expert here with me today. <laughs> I would never correct you, Steve, not on the air. <laughs> all right. Well, I have covered all the questions that I had here for. So before we shut down the interview and everything, is there anything else that you would like to add for the people watching, for your readers, for potential future readers of yours, anything you'd like them to know? Well, I think uh, uh, one thing I'd like them to know is uh, whether you buy – uh, his Revenge, My Girl, or any of my books, um, I certainly hope you hope the readers know that every time you do buy a book and every time you enjoy a book, one of the best ways to, to say to a, an author, hey, I really like that, is to go to Amazon or your favorite uh, point of purchase and actually do a review. Um, authors appreciate reviews that are, are constructive and they appreciate reviews that are are totally, you know, glorious. But in any case, uh, you know, a review is is a way that you can communicate with your author. Uh, the other other suggestion I would have, if you can get your author's email address, which most authors make available readily, and Steve's been real nice on that, uh, drop them a line. Uh, we sit in our lonely rooms and have not too much other to do than to answer any questions you may have about the character, the book, or whatever. Uh, we love to, to dialogue back and forth with, with our readers. And, and so don't be bashful or, or don't think you're uh, bothering an author. Just go ahead and do it. Uh, I have many friends now who uh, I met uh, through my books. And, I, you know, they're virtual friends. I haven't basically met them in person. But... Uh, we have a continuing dialogue, and it's it's a wonderful thing. And uh, readers are just just fabulous people. They're not all hung up like authors are. They're, they're <laughs> open and honest, and they they give uh, really honest feedback. And uh, and when they really like your stuff, it's it's there's there's not a, a better thing to do than talk to a, a reader who really thinks your stuff's good. And, and it uh, provides an instant connection between the it two does. of you. You now have a yeah. common like. It does. And it makes uh, it makes the whole task worthwhile. And then notwithstanding all of that, just read everybody. Reading is good. It's fundamental. Reading is fun. Yeah. At least no, it should be. <laughs> right. Should all right. Be. Well, hey, thank you so very much, John, for uh, being on ODNT and letting us shine the spotlight on you. And it's been my pleasure having that white hot light on me. <laughs> I, uh, I always enjoy, you know, Steve, talking with folks like you and uh, always enjoy uh, having a few moments to kind of let my hair down and just kind of be me. Uh, and that's uh, basically this interview. Yep, what you saw is what you get. Exactly. And we have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, you sure do. You have a great show. All right. Hey, thank you very much, John. Uh, don't hang up on me just yet. I'll come back to you and we'll chat for a few more minutes after it. Okay. So thank you very much. We'll see you in a minute. Thank you, Steve. So that was John W. Howell, and uh, he here to promote his book that just came out this October, His Revenge, which is the sequel to My Girl, but it is not necessary if it is between that and the next latte. You can go ahead and just pick up his revenge and he'll give you enough information from the first one so that you're caught right back up and you're off and running again because he doesn't waste any time getting into the story and lots of good twists and turns and everything and I definitely highly recommend it. So once again, thank you very much for watching ODNT Spotlight. 
Uh, to, with us to guest, our guest today was John W. Howell. And join the ODN team and subscribe to this channel. We have many more authors, artists, actors, musicians uh, on the book scheduled to come on. So we have so much more here for you today. So thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Have a great day. Bye.